yeah, it's great to um, uh, be included here in your series. I think it's a great idea and hopefully, you know, it's a way for people to continue to um, work on and develop aspects of their business during a time that is otherwise really different or, um, um, you know, make something of the time that they have. So um, when you guys contacted me, I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about um, something that maybe a lot of businesses are thinking about or is kind of always in the back of their mind, and that is um, their need to create um, and deliver pitches um, uh, for their ideas, for their products, for their businesses. And um, so with maybe having some extra time, people might be thinking about how they could refine or work on um, these presentations and, and get them ready and so that when, um, you know, so when there's the time comes again that we can go out there and really um, engage with the world, um, you're feeling really confident and good about how you're presenting yourself. Um, so I thought I would make this really condensed and short and highlight, um, based on my experience, kind of uh, sitting in on um, a lot of presentations and pitches, um, some of the, the things that I see typically uh, become a problem um, in a pitch presentation. And, um, and then give you some ideas and some tips for ways that you might uh, kind of avoid that. So I'm gonna see if I can move my, hang on a second, I'm going to, I have to get to my next screen, sorry. Uh, hang on, sorry. No worries. I'm just trying to get to my, because I've shared my screen, but I can't advance my slide. So I'm just going to stop the share for one second. Um, um, Maybe you can try um, sharing. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my, um, hang on a second. I'm gonna go back to my sharing here and try this a little differently. Sorry guys. I'm just gonna do it from my desktop. Okay, can you see that, uh, Carol? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm just, it's not as, um, I'm just going to do it from this window of my desktop because I can control it better, but you can still see what's there. Um, okay. So the first um, thing I want to kind of uh, point out and it, and, and all of these things might seem really obvious to people, but um, it's amazing how when you're the person giving the presentation, it's so easy to do these things and not realize it. Um, and the first one is giving the same presentation to all audiences in the same way. And um, by this, what I'm referring to is the fact that um, not all presentations, first of all, uh, not all pitches are the same. Sometimes they're, you're pitching for funding, sometimes you're pitching for, uh, to make a sale. Um, and so understanding um, the differences between the type of pitch that you're giving will also dictate the type of presentation that you'll deliver. The other thing to keep in mind is I think people always kind of, when they think of presentation, they think of you know, yourself standing in front of a group of people and sharing slides. And um, I think that there are a lot of different types of presentations and pitches and standing up in front of a group is really only one of them. Uh, sometimes uh, you're sitting side by side with somebody looking at a laptop and it's a very one-on-one -on -one sort of uh, exchange. Um, now in the situation that we're all in having to be remote from everything, it's possible that your presentation that you want to uh, share with someone has to be delivered either via Zoom or it has to be sent via email. Sometimes people want to see your presentation deck ahead of even seeing you. So in all of those scenarios, um, 
the presentation itself needs to be delivered at, or considerate of how it's being delivered and who it's being delivered to. Um, so my, um, and my main message here being uh, walk through the presentation scenario that you're looking at. So um, think it through, who is it for? Uh, what, how will it be delivered? Will it be delivered one-on-one? -on -one? Is this a document that somebody's going to read? Um, what is the outcome you're looking for? Are you trying to make a sale? Are you trying to get someone's attention? Do you want someone to ask more questions or dig deeper? Um, and, um, and of course, what type of presentation you know, is it? Is it for sales? Is it for funding? Is it an internal presentation to employees? Um, so although we can, this you know, idea of presentations is a really big area, it's a big category, um, walking through what you anticipate the scenario of your presentation is really important first. Following on that, creating different versions of your presentation might be necessary. So just because you've put a slide deck together and you're happy with it, doesn't mean that that will be the same deck you show every audience. Or you might be putting together a slide deck, but I would hesitate to then email that as a document to somebody because you've designed it to be given in uh, standing up in front of a group of people and not as a standalone document. So keep in mind that it might be uh, more effective if you have slightly different versions of your primary you know, presentation content, depending on how it's being delivered. Um, consider leaving a leave behind materials with more detail. That could be something that you email later if you are giving a presentation in person, something that you can leave with them so with some more details. Um, this also allows you to customize it for the for the situation that you're in and then finally to know the room and anticipate the flow um, you know you again you kind of walk through in your head how you think it will all unfold but it may or may not go that way um, and uh, you know you want to uh, kind of walk through what based on who's going to be there and how you want the energy to from yourself and the group to come across. Um, I think the biggest thing is just kind of thinking about all of that ahead of time. Um, the second thing um, is something that I think everyone's very aware of and you hear a lot about, and that is that your presentation is packed with too much information. And um, this is so easy to do because, and based on my experience um, listening to pitches from food entrepreneurs in particular, um, food entrepreneurs are very passionate people and they have great stories and they have a lot that they want to kind of stuff into their presentations because there's so many aspects of what they're doing that are important. And um, this, is a, this is a natural tendency to want to do this, um, but I, I, I would caution you to figure out what that, where that limit of too much information is. Um, and one way to keep this in mind is I've put here, a presentation is not a business plan. And that typically is where I think uh, it's the easiest to kind of just open the floodgates is that you're up there and you want to make sure if you're standing in front of people or you're sitting with somebody and going through your business idea or however this presentation is unfolding, you want to tell them everything um, and give them every piece of data you've and, and research that you've uh, put together. It's um, too much. It's a fire hose otherwise. And remember that the, the purpose of a really effective presentation is to inspire action. You want someone to, to you, you want someone to 
a follow up on what you are presenting to them with uh, with an agreement, with um, an interest to learn more, uh, being inspired. You want them to um, to to make make it so that the they're they're going to take another step forward in getting to know more about your business or your product. And if you deliver the fire hose of information, it's not leaving that lasting impression. Um, so I suggest that you present less, but make a bigger impression. Um, and focus on the things that are um, really going to make you stand out from other businesses or other products that are similar to yours. Um, keeping in mind that you, you do need to include some business data, but finding a way to balance this with a story is your best combination. Um, a good general tip is to keep one idea per slide. Um, and then again, if you feel the need to have additional, more detailed information in your presentations, having what I call backup slides or kind of slides at the end of a presentation that allow you to go into more detail in certain places but aren't kind of your part of your main delivery allows you as your pick as questions come up to kind of jump to other slides and say oh I have an answer for that or oh I have more data for that um, and a, likewise something that you can leave behind that might have more details um, but what you want is to come away from a presentation, again, whether it's a sales or you're looking for to raise funding um, or just to influence a group of people that you want them to come away with remembering one primary thing about you that makes them want to make another step forward. Um, and so that when somebody asks them, who are they? Who were, what, what stood out? They can identify something in particular. Um, and then the last mistake that I typically find is um, kind of not, you're not always aware of is, is minimizing the story that makes your business unique. Um, so again, with food entrepreneurs and having such a passion for what they do, they, everyone has a really interesting aspect to their story, why they started, what they make, how they do it, who they serve. And um, this is really the thing that, that closes the deal. This is the, it needs to be backed up with, um, you know, all of the important data and facts and information about your business but um, don't let it be overshadowed by all of those details um, because again this is the thing that people will remember and this is the thing that the story is the thing that will um, make you stand out so um, it's also really interesting i'll sometimes see people who in a scenario where they're presenting in front of a group of people will um, stand up and they're their personality is so um, engaging. Um, the passion for what they do is so apparent, yet their slide deck doesn't reflect that at all. <laughs> it's filled with numbers, it's filled with information, and it's all, it's important is there's too much of it. And I'm not saying that some of it isn't necessary, but, the, but they've minimized the importance of why they're there in the first place. And this is, again, the thing that most people will inspire people to take that next step, to, to engage with you further. So um, I recommend that you assess the aspects of your business or your product that truly makes it unique. And this could be anything from you, uh, your background, where you do your business, is it influenced by the place or the environment that you work in, um, how you source it, the approach or process, the ingredients you use, is it based on a traditional, is your business model unique? Find, identify what is truly um, most important about you executing what you do and making it most unique. Um, I then recommend that you, with this 
one main idea that you kind of make this a theme uh, in your presentation. Carry it through your presentation, um, throughout the slide deck, and reference it um, in, in, in sometimes subtle ways, but referencing it throughout the presentation. Um, so even though you might be uh, have slides that you have information about you know, your business model or your revenue projections or um, things like that, um, um, interweaving into the, this, um, the, the flow of your deck should be references back to that thing, that, um, that aspect of your business that is unique. Um, for instance, if you are a business that um, relies on um, the ocean for your, your location by the sea to, um, for either your, your, um, how you source your product or um, um, the, the, the traditions of that place and that region. Um, this is something that you can, and you, you ident and your brand identifies with being in this place. This is something that can be woven into your presentation visually with uh, images and references and with words. Um, coming back to and reminding people at the end of the day, we're here to do this because this is what's important to us and this is how we make a difference. Um, so by rather than feeling like you have to cover it all, every aspect of how your business came to be, um, pick one, maybe two things and think about it like a theme. Um, I also recommend to make this process a little easier, sit down and write a list of words that you believe describe the impression you want your business to make. So what are the words that you want other people to use to describe your product, um, your ideas, your initiative, your um, uh, the, the changes that you make, what are these words that you think um, really represent your brand and use those words in the presentation. Um, you know, come up with this list and, and sprinkle them throughout, uh, uh, throughout your, your slide deck. It's, it's, a, it's a subtle but important way to subconsciously remind people of what's important. Um, and then finally, anytime that you can bring in a personal anecdote as it relates to your theme, your, um, you know, these, these aspects that are unique to your business makes your presentation more memorable, more personable, and again, helps to tie um, your theme and your message together. So that's, that's it. So I, I, you know, I, I, I really um, love when businesses can, like I put here, give the right presentation in the clearest way with the most impact. And um, hopefully some of these tips are, are useful to you guys. So there you go, Carol. Thank you very much, Melissa. That was very, very useful and insightful. And we're going to turn it over to questions. Um, if you have any questions, please submit them via chat or you can alternatively unmute yourself and ask them, ask them directly to Melissa. Hi, Melissa, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Hi, great presentation, thank you. I, I like how you focused in the beginning on customizing the presentation for the, for the audience. Um, can you give any tips on how to keep a presentation or a pitch fresh when you have to give the exact same one? multiple times i run into in my mind i change it just because it's no longer interesting to me but i may end up leaving out vital parts so if you have any tips that would be appreciated um uh sure what like typically when you're giving it are you giving it in person this presentation yes, and usually it, it's you know, at kind of shows uh going booth to booth where i have to give the exact same elevator speech mm -hmm. repetitively and uh, you know, in my mind, I end up changing it up just because it becomes boring to me. But <laughs> I don't want to leave out vital information. Um, yeah, I guess that um, you know, it's it's yeah, I, I'm with you. It's like, gosh, do I? You know, it seems so 
so repetitive once you're doing it yourself. And of course, um, you know, the, the person on the receiving end is not aware of that. They, if they've never met you before, um, then I think that, you know, there's really no, no worry with the fact that it's going to be boring for them. Um, but I don't know. I, I think that, you know, the more that you can involve the person that you're pitching to, um, the more engaging it's going to be. And inevitably that will change a little bit how you might, uh, frame what you're saying, uh, and frame your, um, your message I, that it, it also requires you to think on the spot quite a bit. So, um, if you're comfortable with that, that's a way to, you know, you might, the other way you could think about this is no, you know, that you have some key messages, um, that you want to make sure get delivered. And, um, you know, if you're at least covering those messages, you might do them in a different order. You might um, find new examples or some, or um, anecdotes to uh, illustrate um, the, the, the primary messages you're trying to